Hi, welcome to MPT Tech Talks again. And this is the uh, MPT Tech Talks on battery development. And today I want to welcome James Miller, who's our Senior Principal Development Engineer, 14 years looking at, currently looking at battery development. So James, what we're going to talk about today is the fundamentals of R100 and UN38.3 battery test standards. So yep. I just want to ask you a few questions about that, really. Yep, sure. So first question, uh, why do customers typically want to run the R100 and 38.3 tests? Okay, so there's obviously a, a big range of tests available to battery um, for battery testing to, to customers. Um, they can encompass everything from mechanical to abuse to performance tests. And depending on where you want to position the, the product in the world, um, which market you want to go into, um, does then determine what kind of standard you look at. So obviously in the States, most of the standards are written around SAE. Um, organization in Europe most of the standards are, are governed by the European Union and in China most of the standards are uh, linked to the GBT uh, standard series. And in terms of R100 um, that's really focused on homologating vehicles so um, if customers want to homologate a vehicle for small scale or even um, large volume um, series manufacturing in Europe then the, the documentation, I think it's the standard 858, determines that you need to use R100 to, um, to test the battery such that you can um, pass off the electrical safety component of that okay. battery. UN38.3 is very much focused on transportation of batteries. So lithium-ion batteries are categorised as a dangerous goods. Um, they don't really fit within the normal sort of um, uh, levels, of hazard levels of, uh, of shipping dangerous um, items, so they've got their own category. So really that, that standard is around, uh, the 38.3 standard is around um, having the confidence that you can ship um, you know, battery sales modules around the world. And are those two standards, are they transferable across the world as well? You mentioned the re actual regional standards, but are the, will t different authorities accept those standards? Yeah, so R100 is typically used across a range of different com countries or adopted by a range of countries, so not just the European Union countries, but a range of countries outside of that as well. And likewise with 38.3, typically you can ship most batteries around the world with a 38.3 certification. There are some restrictions. Um, some countries don't um, acknowledge it or recognise it. And, and likewise, there are also some considerations that need to be given with shipping um, batteries across certain airspaces and things like that. So it's it's quite, quite, quite a complicated yeah, subject. Yeah, it. Yeah. Um, okay then, so what type of test do these standards cover then? So those two standards in particular um, really focus on mechanical and abuse testing. Uh, and there's quite a lot of similarities between the two. So both standards include um, elements of mechanical vibration and shock, um, short circuit testing and some temperature cycling testing. Um, there's obviously then some differences, so R100 is a bit more focused around things like fire resistance with mechanical integrity, and even the latest version of R100 has some elements of um, overcurrent um, detection with, with, with interacting with the BMS. Um, as you might expect, then UN38.3 um, has some elements that are only really applicable to transportation, such as like an altitude test, so that's really looking at you know, the, the cycle of moving a pack from ground level to somewhere in the in the air to, to ground level again. Um, there's obviously then also some additional differences. So you can do certain elements of R100 in vehicle, and it's a it's a homologation test. So it needs to be witnessed by a third party. UN38.3 on the other hand is self-certifying, so you can do that um, at any any facility, and provided you have the paperwork and the um, the, 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 ship, the shipping company or the, the pilot or whatever is happy with that paperwork, then that, that is enough evidence to, to ship, the, ship the pack. Um, 38.3 as well, it's really important to, to probably point out that you can apply it to sale module and, and pack levels. And um, I guess we've touched on it at the beginning, but the, the DVP can be quite broad when you start laying lots of different tests and, and standards on top of each other. So, um, you know, in order to get part countdown as part of your development programme, you can do things like um, use 
module certification at 38.3 to certify yeah. a pack, but you can use then specific tests that are only applicable to a pack to kind of get around having to procure lots of you know uh, prototype packs to, to sign those off. So okay. it's a it's a again it's a quite complicated um, subject, but it's something we need to explore with the customer to understand what the requirements are in terms of you know the, their DVP and expectations and and you know marry that with the costs that come with you know procuring prototypes. And we components. can help our, uh, customer, our customers help develop their DVP as required really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And can these tests be run on the new battery facility at Marla Powertrain? So the, um, the battery development centre at Marla Powertrain is mainly focused on performance and environmental testing. So right. some of those tests can be run here. Some of the environmental tests, the thermal cycling tests for example. Um, but the focus with the battery development centre at least at the moment is 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 on performance so um, if we were to do um, arrange any of those tests including our 100 or 38.3 because of the abusive nature of them particularly they would be run at an off-site facility yeah okay thanks a lot james appreciate that and uh, that's the end of this mpt tech talk and if you want to know more from myself or from james please get in touch thanks very much